Hey everybody, today we're going to be playing some hand buff Skoita with Brooverhoog. The deck focuses on buffing up the Sword Masters, and you might notice that we don't have a brand in this deck, I just find that the other silver cards generate more value on average. I put in a uh, Shiru because I was worried about all the cards I would have to um, destroy with Scorches. I will probably replace Shiro with a Geralt Igni. With all the Scoyotel players I've just run into lately, I want to be able to remove that 17 strength card uh, almost instantly. So our first game, we're up against... Uh, actually, I don't remember what I'm up against. Uh, oh, uh, Spellotel. Spellotel is not the best... How uh, should I put it? Best matchup because you can easily over push them. I do not have the last rate in my hand, so I can't really deal with those unless I want to just kill them now. But I feel like I can out tempo my opponent. I'm not exactly sure how I want to place the Farseers because the Farseers are actually really slow in some respects. However, if you're playing a long round and I'm playing against an opponent that's playing high tempo, uh, I, my opponent could easily just pass and give me a hard time that way. Okay, so my opponent plays Shackles. It's a slower thing, but it's more effective against all of these... How should I put it? These ability, ongoing ability effect cards that we're seeing. When we look at... Like Skellige... There are a lot of, like, the long ships and all the veterans. They're all kind of ongoing effects that just, like, they keep hitting their own units over and over again. So the shackles I actually respect from my opponent. The problem is, is that it's... I'm still going trading up on that bronze card by six points. So you gotta really, really value that card correctly. And I don't think... My opponent did that great of a job. Now, I want to mo point out that my opponent could destroy my face down card here if they wanted to, because, well, actually, Summoning Circle, I believe, gets banished. But if they could summon in the circle my Wily, they could destroy my. Uh, <laughs> Teruvial. So I'm just going to probably pass this turn instantly. I have a really good hand. Like I said, I think Yorveth is one of the best Scoia'tael cards right now. It's It does 14 power base, but if you have a big hand, that's one point for extra every elf you have in there. Right now I have four, so that makes it an 18 point gold. Now I know my opponent has a Scorch in their hand. I can abuse that. I push out the Yorvith because I have the Royal Decree. This version of the deck has Royal Decree in it instead of Shiru. Because I wanted the more consist higher consistency with it. So my opponent has that card. Uh, right now they can't use their Scorch. I'm going to be playing my... Yeah, so I kind of messed up my Moran there, but it's not a big of a deal. I'll live. The reason why I played the Morin before I played Yaven is that I wanted to thin my deck with my leader ability and get a better option for my Yorvith. And I also didn't want to buff Yaven with Yorvith because he counts as an elf. I really wish they added a loyal tag to Yorvith so it didn't buff um, Yaven. But you get what you get. My opponent didn't have really good options, so they're going to spore me. They get five points out of this, which is not that great. A five-point bronze is kind of useless. Okay, we're going to probably go into the Hawker supports, and we're going to spread out our points appropriately so we don't get hit by his my opponent's Scorch. We want our opponent to buff up his units to the degree that I won't lose anything from them. My opponent was unlikely in that they didn't get a Quen sign for their... Uh, Doc Blana Protectors. Right now I have like the ideal hand when it comes to the Swordmasters. 
This deck does not have deck thinning because the um, Elven Mercenaries are, I would say, counterproductive to the Swordmasters because you don't want to pull a Swordmaster with a Elven Mercenary half the time. It's still a nine point swing, but it's nine points isn't really worth it. Okay, in our next game, we're up against another um, Enya player, or Ayathne, no whatever way you want to pronounce it. I'm going to play my Yaven early. I shouldn't have done that, and I need to kind of reassess how I play Yaven in the future. So I'm going to now use Royal to Decree to get Yorveth. I want to win this round uh, because I have a pretty, I have a huge hand, and... I can probably just go one under. I have a really nice Yaven play there, and I can just win this with two cards. I like that they added the little buff to Royal Decree, though it has made certain cards really overpowered. Okay, so now I'm going to open up with... Uh, <laughs> with Ithlin. Ithlin. I'm going to go really slowly. Make my decisions based on what my opponent does. I might go with a Dragoon into a Farseer. It depends. So my opponent gets my Quensign, which is annoying. A lot more spells are being played, so it's safer to play Aegleus. Yeah, I could have I could have opened with the Dragoon instead of uh, just buffing more in my hand. My opponent's playing a lot of points. But what I really want to do right now is just trick my opponent into a false sense of security. I dislike that you can't just play Farseer after the Dragoon to get the buff. Right now I'm invulnerable to a Scorch, so I'm taking a risk. Here. My opponent did not have the Scorch. I'm going to get rid of that Farseer immediately, is my intention here, and place my Swordmaster in the top row to avoid an Igni. But it doesn't really matter too much. Fortunately, I get around uh, the Hailstorm because of my Quen signs, which are kind of overpowered right now. So if you count my board, I have four elves face up and one elf face down. That means that Illyrian will come onto the board when I pass. My opponent will have to make a decision of whether, how they want to handle this situation. Most of my opponents have properly guessed that Illyrian's in my deck. This opponent uh, probably doesn't realize how many points my Teruvial has. Already I'm getting card advantage, so I'm not really upset about anything that's happening here. My Farseer is still getting two points every turn, so my Farseer is huge. And my opponent makes one tiny miscalculation. They didn't realize that my Teruvial had been buffed in my hand, thanks to Yorvith and um, the Dragoon. Okay. I misplayed this a little bit because I'm not familiar with the way... Um, Northern Realms is currently playing. I've been opening up with Ithlin a lot lately. And you could disagree with me on how I do that. So I decided to last right here because I just think that that's a good time to do it, but I should have waited a little longer. Because my opponent has a lot of other things that they could uh, buff, and I can start getting more buffs on my Farseers if I start earlier. Okay. Boom, boom. Now here I'm in a tricky situation, because my opponent is running Scorches, and I didn't realize that. So I have to be kind of careful to control my points. I'm still kind of like super Scorch conscious. I can't really bamboozle here. So here, my opponent does something really weird, and I didn't catch it. I'm like, what? Why did they do that? Did they misplay? 
And for some unknown reason, I continue playing even though I shouldn't. So my opponent plays the Scorch, gets rid of 36 points. And they give themselves an ideal situation. I'm not going to play this card and weaken that. Okay, I have a pretty good Swordmaster. I play that. Get that taken care of. And I win the turn. My opponent gives up. They didn't have to, but I had a pretty good situation anyways. Okay, the coin side wasn't going to help me any, so I just drop it. My opponent had a pretty bad card in their hand. They got rid of that, which doesn't matter if I don't play anything. I like my hand. I'm going to keep it. There are cards I don't want to draw, so best that I don't. I don't have a really good target for my Yorvith, so I'm not going I can't really play anything there. So I play Yorvith and get rid of the medic for a maximum value. Now this this kind of combo scares me, but only a little bit. One of the benefits of these new cards is that they allow for a lot of really weird things to happen. And I'm enjoying the game a lot more now. I hope you guys enjoyed.